Well, good morning, everyone, and happy Friday. So good to see you. I'm Tara Brown. I'm Tara Brown in Riverton, Kansas. The unofficial start to the holiday shopping season is here. You now, the sleepy town of Riverton uh, seems like all is going just as normal. Zookeepers take stock of their critters once a year, and the question is, will the animals cooperate? I'm going to be one of the first to get to test drive it. Oh, but this ain't your grandma's, Taurus. Well, the tornado actually hit at 930, so this street in itself has come a long way. He was cleaning his gun when it accidentally went off sending bullets flying hit list. Will those parents and students be notified? Good news now, a Sandy County Sheriff's deputies have confirmed one man is dead from an early morning shooting. In it's believed she was hit here in the middle of the road. This is Swanee's Bar, just one of the establishments in question. We've got hamburgers, we've got hot dogs, and we've got the Mr. Grill himself with a very special secret. Here in Pensacola, the Jesus doll is so hot. And behind stage with the one and only Toby Mac. Check out his ride over there. I love it. And you can even do it in heels. Actually, just about an hour ago, a 45-year-old black male was found inside. Now, take a look. It's a yellow building. I don't know if you can see it there behind the car. It's actually a barber shop. It is said that's where authorities arrived on the scene and found a 45-year-old black male. Neighbors tell us the man murdered was well-liked, and that's why you're seeing so many people gathering around the scene. And just moments ago, police had the daunting task of notifying the deceased wife. Now, friends of the man tell us he was loved in this community and will be greatly missed and many are speculating this was a robbery but of course police say they are conducting a full investigation and of course as soon as we have more information we will bring it to you that's coming up tonight at six reporting live tara brown channel three news three in the morning now in high definition Happy Monday, everyone. Great to see you on this early morning. I'm Tara Brown and Christian Garman has, I'm sure, all the very cold details. It is. All right, thanks, Christian. Well, fire officials are investigating the cause of a fire that destroyed a restaurant in Baldwin County this weekend. First on three this morning, firefighters say the blaze broke out at the Wolf Bay Lodge in Alberta around three Sunday morning. No one was in the restaurant at the time and no one was hurt. Firefighters say the building is a total loss. Late last night, firefighters were called back to the property after some hot spots rekindled. A brush fire that flared up yesterday afternoon could have people in Holly Navarre seeing smoke in the area for the next few days. Well, firefighters say a two to three acre brush fire started around 2.30 off of East Bay Boulevard on the Holly Navarre airfield. Now, the fire is contained and did not threaten any homes. The U.S. average for gas prices dipped to $1.75 a gallon, and that's a near five-year low. According to the Lundberg survey, the average price of self-serve gasoline dropped 22 cents in the past two weeks. Lundberg attributed the price reductions to a drop in crude prices and demand. The Blackwater Worldwide security guards are planning to surrender to the FBI today in Salt Lake City, Utah. The men were indicted Thursday in a case that's expected to be made public later today. All were involved in a 2007 shooting in Baghdad that left 17 Iraqi civilians dead. The shooting strained U.S. diplomacy and fueled anti-American sentiment abroad. By surrendering in Utah, the guards can argue the trial should be held there, not in Washington, D.C., where they were charged. Off now to ABC News, New York. Here's a look at this morning's Tech Bites from ABC News. This is WEAR 3 in the morning in high definition. Well, good morning, everyone, and happy Friday. So good to see you. I'm Tara Brown. Well, it's time again for Fridays on the Beach, and Jared and Christian, you guessed it, are hanging out at the beach, this time in Destin. The King of Pop is being mourned by fans across the globe this morning. Michael Jackson died suddenly Thursday afternoon of cardiac arrest in Los Angeles. Well, Jackson's body is now at the Los Angeles County Coroner's Office and an autopsy is scheduled. His brother Jermaine cautioned that the cause of his death would not be known until the autopsy was performed. He said Michael's personal doctor and paramedics tried to resuscitate him at his home. A team of doctors at UCLA Medical Center also tried for more than an hour. The news shocked fans worldwide. We have new information this morning about a deadly car crash in Santa Rosa County. It happened on I-10 near Milton just before 6.30 last night. The crash shut down the eastbound lane for several hours. Troopers tell us 53-year-old Tommy Cochran of Tallahassee was stopped on the side of the road when he pulled out in front of a semi truck. Now the semi hit the front of Cochran's car and Cochran's car then hit the tires of another semi that was passing by. Cochran was pronounced dead at the scene. 
Well, a Florida prison guard faces charges accused of beating an Escambia County man who was serving time in a prison in Bradford County. Sergeant Richard Cross turned himself in this week. Now, detectives say he was part of a group of guards who pulled Daryl Stanberry from his cell during a power outage and beat him. The beating was caught on security video. Cross faces a five-year sentence if convicted, and charges are pending on the other guards who were involved. Well, a Massachusetts court says it has no record of ever granting temporary custody of an Alabama boy to his father. Nathaniel Turner was declared clinically dead on Tuesday after police say his dad beat him on Father's Day. Relatives of the boy said they were given a court order about a month ago to send the boy to live with his father in Wooster for the summer. But court officials say there's no evidence the father was ever granted custody. It's now up to his family's discretion to remove the boy from life support. Well, AIG has reached a deal to pay back part of its government bailout. The details in this morning's Money Scope report. Well, what does speeding, oysters, and jewelry all have in common? Today's trivia. Oh, yeah. A 45-year-old man was found dead here in this building. It is the barber shop he owned and operated for years, making him well known in the community. Those I talked with today say he'll be greatly missed. He was a well-liked guy, but along with his family and his in-laws. Jerome Knight, along with dozens of stunned neighbors, looked on in disbelief, trying to understand who would kill a beloved barber who helped so many. Really kind-hearted person. Uh... He was a good man. Jason Bradford worked for the victim, whose identity is not being released until his next of kin is notified. Bradford says he was always helping people. And he opened his, opened his hands up for me and let me come on in and get a job, so he's a good man. Escambia Sheriff's Department says the barber was found dead inside his shop a little after 3 Thursday. He was shot a number of times. There are a lot of bullet holes all over the place. The barber's wife was working across the street. That's where police told her what had happened. He has a young child, and, uh, and we know for a fact that she's crazy. She was crazy about her. She's crazy about her dad. And, uh, and, and as of now, I know she probably don't know yet. But uh, we know that, uh, and of course, his wife. His wife loved him very much. She loves him very much, and, uh, and, and all of us. We're, 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 this, this is a saddened day for all of us. It's going to be missed, to be honest. It's really going to be missed in the neighborhood. Escambia County Sheriff's Department say they do have a suspect, but no description has been given at this time. Reporting in Escambia County, Tara Brown, Channel 3 News.